Right, so resuming our review for day 70 of this New Year's tree planting thing. Um, so going into the sort of second geographical block, well, the only really big geographical block of trees. Uh, so let's get on with it. Our first lychee actually seems to be enjoying the intensified sunlight. We've got a lovely little growth point just in there. So I'm happy with that. Our little dipsis here is sheltered enough that it hasn't really noticed yet, I don't think. The growth point is nice and firm. It's looking a little brown, but I think that's just because of the dirt getting into the folded leaf. It's nice and firm generally. Yeah, it's just dirt. Um, and you can see even these little Buddha bellies are starting to get some new growth coming there, which will fill out pretty quickly and add a little bit more shelter, hopefully. The uh, Garcinia Livestoni, which is the um, mangosteen, wild mangosteen, is, you can see this new growth point is opening up nicely and there's another one over there at the far end. So I'm really pleased with that. Still no sign of upward growth. And even though it is much more exposed, its sibling is showing no sign of sunburn and again, some really lovely growth. These really firm leaves, I would almost expect to be prone to sunburn uh, because they're just gonna hold the heat so well, but they do seem to be absolutely fine. So I'm really pleased with that. I am really, really impressed with the speed of growth on this little jackalberry, sort of recovering from being just completely stripped by that caterpillar infestation when I first put it in. So I'm, yeah, really pleased with that. So once again, caterpillar is not all bad. Sometimes caterpillar plus time equals a very vigorous little tree. A little less happy with life, although these leaves are mostly alive, even though they are going red again. Um, is our little Eugenia uniflora, uh, which is definitely not pleased about the intensification of light. We do have what looks like a living growth point here, but it's not, it's not best pleased with me at the moment, so we'll see how that perks up. And just next to this wonderfully vigorous aloe cameroni, we have a fairly vigorous, I would say, bottle brush tree. So this is Kelistamon. I think it's the weeping bottle brush which very much is your tropical alternative to a weeping willow. It's a beautiful tree when mature. All the calestamen, though, I think are quite lovely. Um, but yeah, so no sign of sunburn, really. A little bit of darkening around some of the edges of these tender leaves. But I would say, generally speaking, this is a perfectly happy little little tree coming up. Alice, the Balhinia petersiana, whose tender leaves have been eaten, but whose growth tips have been left intact, seems to still be in the same situation. So I'm not unhappy with that. Just uh, waiting to see how that shakes out. The uh, Orbia that had been buried by the mole rat activity, it's nice and firm again, so that's good. I think this is a bit of new growth, so that's pretty good. And then up here, her Dracaena companion and eventual support is looking nice and firm. A little bit of sunburn on some of the outer leaves here, which is hard to sort of picture at this time of day when the sun is coming from a different angle, but you can see where it's been exposed a bit, there's a little bit of damage. But I'm not sure actually if that's this week's or last week's. A little sand olive, who up close and personal you can see how absurd it is to call it an olive. Uh, I think it's mostly in the New World it's referred to as uh, native hops. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's not like an olive, but it's very happy with this weather. So I am pleased with that. Another tree that has absolutely no complaints, apparently, about this weather is this little Dombea. It's coming up beautifully. The first one I planted is actually in quite a lot more shade than this, as I can find. So I'd say this is a pretty good multi-purpose tree uh, with pretty wide environmental tolerance. So I'm happy with that. Our little uh, serious uh, Rapandus Peruvian apple here is looking a nice Nice guy. I mean, nothing will have changed since last night. But you can see the differentiation between uh, the growth it had on the mother plant and the growth it's had since I cut it off there. It's a nice, healthy little thing, so I'm happy with that. Our little K apple, the Dovialis, is looking nice and vigorous. Uh, as far as I know, these are pretty tolerant of a lot of bright light, although I think they usually will want a little bit of water partway through, because I know they grow up into the places with two rainy seasons rather than just the one. Um, so, We'll keep an eye on it, but I'd say that's looking pretty good currently. And another rough lemon that is neither here nor there. I think there might actually have been some new growth on this one. I'm always thinking that though, 
because it's got that color of fresh growth and it doesn't seem damaged in any significant ways. So I'm happy with it, I just wish it would show more obvious signs of progress. And it's sibling, ow, it's sibling over here with an absolutely stunning uh, little leaf hopper nymph on there. I don't know if you can see that at all. Um, but really lovely little plant, uh, sorry, really lovely little leaf hopper. Plant not doing much yet, uh, really nothing, nothing to say. It's not unhealthy, so I'm not unhappy, but it's not doing anything yet, so I'm not particularly happy either. These Bauhinia variegata, looking nice. Uh, some spiders on there, but I'm not gonna go on about jumping spiders again. <laughs> so, uh, but nice and healthy, nothing to sunburn. I think they got that out of the way when, when they first went in and these original leaves got turned to toast. But little ones, same sort of situation. And the one that has been worst affected by sunburn looking absolutely fine with the light intensity now. So just keep that watered, I think, and we should be, we should be good. Uh, another one that has not seemed to suffer too much, although there does seem to be some damage on the grow tips here, is this little uh, avocado, so Persia americana. Uh, and generally speaking, the companion plants look really pretty perky. This is well sheltered from the wind. But it does get pretty full sunlight, more or less once we're past midday. So, so I'm quite pleased with how well that leaf is standing up. And I'm downright impressed with its sibling, uh, which was in a much more shaded position to start with. The original leaf is still standing, and you can see in the middle there some new leaves coming. And that is despite this being the one that the ants decided they were going to uh, undermine. So I will try and fill that hole back in. They do seem to have moved on for now. Uh, but it doesn't seem to have been nearly so upset by it as the little Brachystesia seedling that that happened to first. Okay, so on to Fenchurch, I think. So a little lychee seedling that went in for the 42nd day. Um, and she is, again, not throwing herself at the ground by any means of anyone. I uh, doesn't know what that means in, in the later books of Hitchhikers, in which Fenchurch is a component of their works that uh, you can fly by throwing yourself at the ground and missing. <laughs> But it, yeah, nice little growth point coming up there, which is not the first growth this one's shown, so I'm really pleased with that. And Ford in here is again coming up nicely, so I'm pleased with that lovely red new growth and another growth point behind just following up. Arthur himself, uh, the little Articarpus heterophyllus, looking a decent colour. There's been some damage here. I think that is sunburn actually with some assistance from a caterpillar by the sense of silk. Yeah, there's been some caterpillar activity there. Nothing too major, and I'd say still a healthy little seedling. Little row of Olfia, uprooted from a friend's garden where it was not wanted. The leaves that are left have a decent enough texture, a little bit soft. You can see the growth points themselves nice and upright. And so yeah, not unhappy with that. The smaller one, which had shown more stress to begin with, is actually showing distinct new growth. A little bit of a recurring theme today, so uh, it does give me hope about some of the things looking dismal at the moment, but uh, yeah, not bad at all. Some lovely little growth on that one. Uh, Mexican apple is looking like it's got some lovely new growth opening up there. Very little still, but uh, yeah, that's coming along all right. This one in a more exposed location, the tip is very much toast. This is hopefully going to go the same way as the Brydedias that we'll be seeing later. Um, but yeah, the stem lower down doesn't feel bad, and if you scratch it, you can see there's green in there, which is a good test usually for whether you've killed something completely, if it's big enough that you can get away with that without causing too much stress. So hopefully that'll regenerate, but yeah, the tip is the tip is doomed. Whereas their sibling that went in just before, I think had a little bit longer before we reached this dry zone, seems to have got a lovely little growth point coming up there, and yeah, isn't the one leaf I left on it that <laughs> was tiny at the time. It's nice and firm now, so I'm happy with that. Brachystesia spiciformis now, as opposed to the taxifolia earlier that was so depressing. This one is actually looking pretty good. No sign of any change, but no sign of stress or sunburn, and definitely no sign of anything trying to dig it up and eat it. This one is looking even better. You can see that little red growth point right in the middle there, which should turn into some new leaves in the next few weeks which is great. And this one, which had root damage to begin with, has sensibly closed its leaves a little to reduce water loss, but the colour is getting better and better on this. I, I'm 
pretty happy with this as it is currently. I'm hoping it'll perk up uh, in a more continuous fashion and start opening out like its siblings, but for now it is behaving perfectly well. Um, the one that got anted is a... Uh, there's still some spring in there, so there might still be some life in there, but that is too small a seedling for you to want to scratch the side and see if there's actually life. So we'll see if anything comes back there, but I doubt it. And this little Musakili, uh, Trichelia emetica, still not doing anything much. Growth point not burned, no real sign of sun damage on the leaves. We can't say the same for the black-eyed Susan that's wrapping herself around it, but uh, but that's indestructible anyway. But uh, so I'm, I'm happy with it, I just wish it would do something. Our little mystery fig is doing something. It's coming up nicely. It's too sheltered to really suffer sunburn. These leaves are firming up well with a little extra light. There's no sign of any new growth coming. In fact, it looks from the color of those growth points like they might be stopping for the season. Um, but it's not unhealthy and I'm quite happy. Another one that looks like it's probably stopped for the season, although there's, there's a little point coming there in the middle there. Uh, is this little mango tree. This should be the yellow mango, which is my favorite to eat of the varieties we have. Uh, so I'm happy with the state of this generally. So our yuccas, again, not showing much damage from the sun. A little bit of sunburn up there. Nothing too major. Um, I'd say it's straightening up fairly well. If I point it up there, you can't see much other than white. But it's not in a bad state, so I'm not unhappy with that. And this dragon fruit, which can be prone to sunburn when planted out, seems a healthy colour still, so I'm happy with that. This one, I would say, is much the same. It's straightening up. Less sign of sunburn, I would say, on this one. Generally, generally doing a little bit better, nothing major. And dragon fruit not in a bad state, so happy with that. And the third of them still very much somewhat uh, bent over from the the heat but not sunburned so that's good and likewise the dragon fruit is still a nice green color not showing any suffering from the sun this moringa as i alluded to in part one is not nearly so healthy as a sibling in shade uh, it's dropped a lot of its leaves they are quite tolerant of dry conditions so i doubt this is anything terminal for it but it might slow its growth for this time of year that said the new growth is lovely and tender, and the growth point is perfectly healthy, so I'm not concerned. And just as some of the plants in shade have perked up with a little bit more light, this is reminding me that acacias really like to be exposed. So this is the winter thorn, Fetoherbia albida, and you can see how much it has just shot up with the increased light and decreased sort of cloud cover and rain. So this is definitely taking over as a dominant, but even the branches that look completely dead now have lots of little growth points on them, so I'm really happy with this one. Our little Dalanix regia, which is the uh, flamboyant from Madagascar, is not convinced about the intensity of this light. The growth points themselves are not unhealthy. There's a little bit of sunburn there. Might have been water stress burn instead of sunburn because I think that was there last week. But it's not, it's not thriving as I would like, but it's not suffering too much either. Then we have our Malinas, and so the first one in the line is looking nice and healthy, some nice new growth, no sunburn whatsoever. Even a bunch of growing points popping up further down the stem. And Brydelia number one, showing some lovely new growth coming out there. Malina number two, again, growth popping out all over the stem. Brydelia number two, definitely showing good signs of recovery, nice little points coming out here. Malina number three, who had been the sulkiest at one point, nice and leafy now. Rydelia number three, which never really lost its growing tip, unlike the others. Nice and open there. And some more leaves coming down below here. Malina number four, a nice vigorous growing tip. And a few more coming up for good measure. Fourth Brydelia, again, some lovely little parts opening up. Some nice little red leaves coming here. Very happy with that. And the only Malina to ever sulk about anything. Uh, number four, showing no real change. It's its uh, main growth tip is dying back and there's no sign of any secondary ones coming up yet. Jacaranda number one is in a pretty good state. No sign of sunburn. These new leaves, they're, they're tender, coming out nice and firm. This Bathodia seems to have got a little bit of sunburn where it's got dew on it from these grass leaves around it. 
Uh, so that all those wet leaves will have burned a bit, and it does look like some insect damage has been happening there too. But generally speaking, happy and healthy, and the growth point is coming up still, so I'm happy with that. And our little tiny tree hibiscus, uh, Hespesia galkiana, is coming up nicely, so this is hope. Uh, and yeah, this is the leaf that was just plastered to the aloe and is now standing free and has two new leaves since then, so I'm very happy with that. And this little jacaranda, I will take off the older leaves here actually because they're just yellowing and not doing anything much. The new leaves are nice and firm and vigorous, so I'm very happy with that. Uh, this least enthusiastic of the jacarandas has two lovely new leaves here, very good shape, very good colour, very good texture, so I'm happy with that. Down in the shadows, this little phoenix is reminding me of the value of a few weeds, because a little bit more shelter and it's so much less sunburned than some of some of the uh, more recent plantings. It does seem to be settling in nicely. I do think this has come up a bit. Nothing major, but a little bit, I think. So I'm happy with that. And our original maligners at this point probably barely need any mention until they start dropping their leaves for the dry season. Two, also in good shape. Number three, wonderful colour. Number four, a little bit of insect activity. I oh, know, probably spider activity, but perfectly healthy. And number five, looking absolutely fine. Our little ghost tree, not suffering from the sun as far as I can see at all, and some lovely little new leaves coming up in the middle there. Just looking, sorry. Some lovely new leaves coming up in the middle there, just looking lovely. Um, a bit repetitive there, but I'm happy with that. Pachura number one, two, and three, all in sort of a holding pattern, but not unhealthy by any stretch. Day one's Pachuras, more settled, but a little more sunburned. Uh, the intensification of the light does seem to have affected them more. Uh, I guess they've probably had more time to get used to the darkness, but uh, not unhealthy, just a little bit, a little bit sun bleached in places. Second of them, much less so, so I'm happy with that. And there's a bit of sun damage and a bit of insect damage on the third one, but generally speaking, it's not looking so so uh, stressed as the first, and I'm happy with that. Tamarind is a decent colour, not showing sunburn. So you can see it's a little bit closed up from the stress, and some of these growth points aren't looking like they're going to do much, but it's definitely not unhealthy, and I'm happy with it. And the jade bushes don't mind the sun at all. Next, Pachira. Despite being rather pale, not too sunburned. A little bit on that leaf, but nothing major. Mm, tiny bit of sunburn here, nothing to write home about. And this one is looking perfectly happy and carrying on growing as if nothing has happened, so I'm happy with that. A little bit exposed here and a little bit of sunburn, but nothing major. And some nice growth still coming along there. Less exposed, less sunburn, no real change. Once again, no sunburn and no real change on, on this one. Our uh, would-be Pachira aquatica as opposed to Glabra. Nice new little leaf coming there. Some of the uh, new leaves that ha have been attempting to put out are a little burnt, whether that's sun or water stress, I'm not sure. The leaves themselves, the mature leaves, don't look sun stressed, but uh, yeah, not nothing to worry about, but nothing particularly great either. Uh, this one, clearly it's the midday sun doing the burning because it doesn't get evening because of some uh, wild sesame. A little bit sunburnt, but nothing major. And the last one, again, a tiny little bit of sun bleaching. I wouldn't say this is anything serious. Even these leaves probably won't suffer from this long term, but it's just just some response to the environment. I mean, sometimes that can be reassuring. It means the tree is alive and responding. But not too great, not too bad. On to the bamboo. And number one, it's looking absolutely fine. I'm not, uh, there's maybe a tiny bit of sunburn, but nothing major. And the second one, no real signs of stress. Well, some, some of the older leaves going yellow, whether that's from the sun or just age, not clear. But generally speaking, in good health, and I'm happy with that. Right, so that should be everything for today. I'm assuming together they might actually be shorter than last week's because uh, the battery's not flat yet, but we'll see. Uh, so this will be going up probably after day 70's planting. Probably it'll be going up on day 71 or 72. Um, thank you very much for watching. Tune in again later today to whichever day I am uploading today. Thank you very much.